with Mike Ricksecker from Haunted Road Media. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, we're just going to keep on yapping here about anything that's going on. So since we do have 15 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and ask these important questions. How, are pe- how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, get a hold of me a couple different ways. You can go to MikeRicksecker.com or HauntedRoadMedia.com. Um, also, of course, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe, which is Haunted Road Media. Uh, also available, of course, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those fantastic places. Is there going to be a prize when you get up to 15,000 subscribers? Yeah, 15,000 would be the next one. We did a big one for 10,000. So Yes, I know. But, you know, Tom can't keep winning everything. Well, he only got he got the little second prize that I gave. I know. He didn't get Katie Palmer got the, she got the shirt, she got the hat, she got, you know, the book, ghosty coffee. That was a lot to give out. And I just kind of on the cut off the cuff did, "Oh, let's do a second drawing." It happens to be Tom. He has like you know, all the books. everything. Yeah. Tom is, is a good, uh, a good guy to have. He, he really does support his, his paranormal friends. He does. That Tom is absolutely fantastic. So we worked out a deal. He wants more coffee. So instead of the book, he's going to get coffee. Perfect. So, uh, he does drink it. So he, you does. Guys oh, also, he loves it. Yeah. So those of you who don't know, haunted road media has their own coffee. So you got to check that out, and it's called Haunt. What is it called? Your Haunted coffee? Road Roast. Yeah, you can find it in the merch section on our website. Perfect. So, and like I said, I know a lot of people drink coffee. I'm not a big coffee drinker, but you know, you guys can go out there and check it out. If you now, if you came up with Haunted Road Media wine, uh, like a Moscato, you because I know that you guys are more. You're not dry wine drinkers. From what I, I saw, dry wine. Well, I drink dry. Yeah. You do? Well, I know that the wine that I had, you guys seemed to like that some, and it wasn't dry. It was a uh, sparkling, which I usually don't like sparkling, but whatever I got was good. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty decent. Yeah. CBS um, yeah, had as, pretty decent wine for some reason that day. <laughs> yeah. As I've gotten older, I've liked my wines drier, so you know I, I prefer reds. Um, you know, I'll, I'll like I'll. I have to. I have to be careful though. Like if I if I drink a, a Cabernet Sauvignon, um, it it will dehydrate me very quickly. So yes. I need to be careful with it. Got to drink water right after. Yes. Yes. So here's a question: When are you broadcasting from the pool at Mineral Springs? This is from Dara. Yeah, great question, uh, Dara. We are doing that March nineteenth. And is that in conjunction with something else, or you're just going to be out there? We're just going to be out there doing it. So we did a, uh, back in January, we did a live broadcast out of Pearl's room and then out of Molly's room upstairs. Um, it was really well received. Dave and I talked about, you know, what else we could do. He's like, hey, you guys should broadcast out of here again. It was like, um, yeah, we'd love to. And then he asked about broadcasting out of the pool. So we've been trying to figure out how to rig everything up that we could actually broadcast out of there. Because, I mean, as everybody knows, you, you cannot get any any sort of signal up out of there whatsoever. So no. we're going to... We're going to wire it up. <laughs> I could get a long cable. We're going to wire it. Yeah. So, you, so you guys don't, if you don't know, it's at least, it's at least a story underground. Yeah. And it's, and, it, and the thing is, is it's at an angle. It's on, you know, Alton's built kind of on a bluff in, on the Missouri River. On the Mississippi this is River. why they call it bluff city. <laughs> yeah. So, and if you go down a little bit further, the, the Missouri River comes into the Mississippi River, not far from there. I always teased everybody that when we were doing tours in Atchison, if you folded the map over of Missouri, um, Atchison, Kansas, and Alton, Illinois would fall on top of each other. And it's Hmm. very strange how their histories, you know, coincide with the railroads. If the railroads had gone through in different places, you know, that that Alton would have been the St. Louis and Atchison might have been the Kansas City, you know, of of our time. You know, who knows? But, you know, this has got very similar history. And similar hauntings. And when you go through all of it, it's just very, very odd um, how some of this stuff matches up. But uh, there's, I mean, I remember seeing Mineral Springs on, um, what was it? Uh, ter- most Terrifying Places or something S- like that. Scariest um, Places on Earth. Was it the Scariest Places on Earth? Or yeah, was, it was it on one of those shows, the, the ten, ten, top ten it was on one of those top ten shows too. 
when Antoinette oh, okay. was doing tours there as well. But this was back before, shoot, was it, let's see, it's 2019 now. It would have probably been like in 2002 that okay. I would have seen it. So it was a long time ago. And all they talked about on this thing was the Jasmine Lady. That's all they talked about, <laughs> the Jasmine Lady. And I'm like, uh, oh, and some something else, somebody about somebody drowning in the pool. And it's like, okay, whatever, yeah. you know. Well, the one and, I got a kick out of uh, uh, the scariest places on earth was the, the three guys that were investigating. They were like, yeah, all three of us have uh, PhDs in parapsychology. I was like, oh, great, this is gonna be wonderful. Oh, <laughs> it. Like I said, I'm gonna have to go hunt that down on YouTube because I I know I saw it, but you know it's been so long yeah. ago. But scariest should, places on earth was one of the best shows it out was. there. Yeah, at that because, time, yeah, it was like 1999 or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah, it was a great show. And they actually covered McPike um, on that show, too. Yeah, they did. And there was another one called Ghost Stories mm-hmm. um, with um, uh, Patrick McPhee, Mc, McKee. He was on there with the guy from, um, oh, what was that show? It was a, it was a, um, oh, Head, he was a spy. I love the show. I can't even remember the name of it right now. But he he was the narrator of it and loved the show. And we had it on VHS. You could only get it on VHS at the time. And I'm going to get it again. McPike was on there. And they interviewed some local kids that had snuck into the place. And Sharon keeps asking me for that clip. And it's like, oh, wow. God darn it. And I can't. And, of course, I don't have a working VCR to, to get it for Avengers, that's it. Thank you, FJB. So um, it was the Avengers. I love that show, and uh, very, very, very uh, popular in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I saw it when I'm only twenty nine. Um, so, <laughs> but must have been all those repeats. But it, it was just one of those shows, and they covered all kinds of places that you know we all know about today. That back in the 90s, you know, we were just hearing about them and going, oh, my goodness, all these places are haunted. How, how did we not know about this? Um, if it wasn't, you know, I remember watching um, In Search Of and yes. all of those different shows um, on TV that actually covered a lot of these supposed hauntings and, you know, we're finding out now that they really were haunted, but back then we didn't know whether or not to believe it or if it was fake, you know, because we were told back in the seventies that it was fake. I mean, you were probably told the same thing. Oh, uh, of course. Yeah. And I remember in search of, and I remember, you know, watching stuff about Amityville on in search of and, and stuff like that. Um, it was a great show with, with Leonard Nimoy. Um, you know, and they cover a, a wide a range of topics. It wasn't just hauntings and all that, but that was, that was about as much as you could get for mm-hmm. a show back then. I mean, they didn't have like a whole, you know, swath of, of paranormal shows like we do today. So yeah, it was like whatever you get your hands on and you know, it's not like you could stream it or go online and find it or anything like that. It was whenever it was on TV. <laughs> so, and thank you, Frank. FJB is Frank. So <laughs> it didn't, it didn't register suddenly. And the, I knew this person. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you um is the show kindred spirits the most boring show tv show on on air or what <laughs> somebody asked that question i haven't watched it yet so i don't know i can't speak um, to it I, i'm gonna go with they have reached out and decided to follow the zach bag and school of of demons but they've changed it up a little bit to where the place has got a demon but we're gonna fix it Oh, okay. Yeah, so recently they did uh, the Belvoir Winery, and apparently there's now, since they made it into the bed and breakfast, it's got a dark haunting, and people are, are leaving there. They're not staying. They're leaving. And the main building was the least of the problems. There was, We never experienced anything in that main building. And if you ever went on a paranormal investigation there, everything started from that main building that's now the bed and breakfast. And um, they decided that there was a dark haunting in there and that it had to be fixed. And I'm like, okay, well, I I don't know, 
but as many times as I've been to that place, I've never felt anything dark there. No, not in the main building. So, not in any building. No, um, no, as far as dark, no, not in any, not in any building. For, and I have never had any experience in the main building, so, yeah. In the morgue, we actually did witness that woman that they said got picked up and held to the wall. We were there. Ron was actually trying to get her off the wall. We were there oh, wow. that day. So, okay. we, we know about that one, but... We don't know if that was something that came with one of us or whatever. You know, it was we were, but we happened to be there. So we have actually, and Tom, we did at Shane. I have asked Shana to be on the show, but at the time that I asked her to be on the show, she had gotten a job that was going to interfere and her job had to come first. So, yeah, she's working that. right now. She's working so, right now. Yeah. So she usually works Monday nights. So, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the reason. Um, the next question is, uh, Frank says, does, does everyone know that there's another Amityville movie coming out? It's in theaters right now. Is there? I mean, they had, like, a couple of years ago, Amityville Awakening, I think it was. Um, I didn't see it, so. Well, this one's got actually got the girl that was uh, John Cusack's girlfriend in Better Off Dead. Hmm. It is the main character, Diane Franklin. That's all I know. <laughs> okay. So, I I'm not a horror movie person. That so I am gonna have to get caught up on horror movies if we're gonna be doing the uh, Spook Show Con. I'm gonna have to know something about horror movies. Yeah. So, um, so the next place that people can can come in contact with you personally is going to be uh, this the event in Waterloo, Iowa, March third and fourth. Second and third. Or second and third. I wrote down yeah. the wrong days. Second and third. And that, what's the name of that event? Um, what is she called? I think it's just, it's a psychic fair or something. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, so, don't, I don't have the event name written on my calendar that's on the fridge. It says Waterloo, Iowa, March 2nd and 3rd. I know it's Kelly okay, McCarvel. Okay, so, so, so there you go. <laughs> check out, go check out Kelly McCarvel and she'll be able to, Moon Spinner, and she'll be able to tell you more information about that event on the 2nd and 3rd in Waterloo, Iowa. And then you've got April 13th and 14th. April 13th and 14th, that's in uh, Dubuque, Iowa. And, th and then May 4th and 5th is the one at um, Ohio State Reformatory. Right. And then June 1st, you got... The June 1st, the Haunted Media Paracon. Mm -hmm. So, and then we know for sure that you're going to be there at... On August 17th at the uh, Spook Show Con as one of our many speakers. So we're looking right. forward to seeing you at so many different places this year. It so, is the Waterloo Psychic and Paranormal Expo. All right. So you guys check that out if you've actually got, if you've got time to go. Hopefully you have good weather. I hope so. <laughs> well, I mean, it's only what? Uh, yeah, early week, March. Week you never away? know. Yeah, I mean, you're you're not. I mean, it's not that far away. So, so everybody, I want. I'm going to be having on uh, one of Mike's authors here in a couple weeks. I was supposed to have on Cat Gash um, back on the fourth, but I had to cancel the show. But I have Cat Gash coming on on March 18th. She's one of his many authors. And then I have, um, let's see, Vanessa Hogel is going to be on April 1st. She's a Haunted Road Media author. And let's see, I have, I have somebody else. Who do I have? That's it so far. That's all I have booked uh, coming up of Haunted Road Media people. So you guys awesome. need to check, check those out. So that we can make sure that you guys get to know everything there is to know about um, Spook Show Con speakers and people that are going to be attending the Haunted Road Media event or our Haunted Road Media uh, authors. Uh, we have a lot more authors out there. And uh, also, uh, you can check out all of Mike's books on his his website, hauntedroadmedia.com, right? Yep, hauntedroadmedia.com. And then... If you can also check him out on Amazon, he also has an author page on Amazon. So, and then next week, my guest is let me look. I did, you know, I was looking to see who I had on. 
Next week, my guest is Linda Carino. So 